As a historian, um, would you rate Robert Service as accurate? Would you rate him as unbiased? Do you think he's got an agenda here? Well, I agree with your last point. He's got an agenda. Um, you find very many capitalist historians who can be objective or relatively objective, even when they're talking about revolutions, like you know, um, different historians from the from the British school, the kind of empirical school mm -hmm. of dealing with facts, which are generally accepted. But service, unfortunately, is not in that category. He's the same as Pipes. He's the same as all the other calumnators the people who just attack the Russian Revolution and are not scientific or objective in the way that they deal with the situation. Trotsky was meticulous in making sure that he, he, he presented the ideas of his opponents in a correct fashion, not distorting their ideas. Unfortunately, that criteria is not applied by Robert Service. In fact, he makes a number of mistakes, a number of factual errors, which no conscientious historian would make which discredits, by the way, his method. If we go into it, we're going to do a reply to service. If we go into it, we'll find in the archives all kinds of things torn out of context. Mm -hmm. What I find incredible in this book is in the one chapter, you can get him saying on the one side, Trotsky was vain, he was a chancer, mm -hmm. all kinds of accusations are made. The next stage you will, you, will, you will find him saying, well, Trotsky was seen as not being vain, he didn't boast and so on. Mm -hmm. You pay your money, and you get your choice, but the overwhelming impression is to try and present Trotsky in a bad light personally. Not because of his objective, not his objective role. That's occasionally thrown in. In segment four, uh, Robert Service is quite, I think, quite simplistic when he describes um, what Trotsky said about um, Hitler as a mere puppet of capitalism. Um, do you think that would be fair that he'd be you know, not taking a very sophisticated understanding of, of, of what Trotsky's analysis was? Well, I think, again, that uh, shows that he doesn't understand mm -hmm. either what the phenomena of Nazism, of fascism represented, if put in, in its more general context, nor what the attitude of Trotsky mm -hmm. was towards this uh, phenomena, who most independent commentators, fair-minded independent commentators say, even if they disagree with many other things, that Trotsky stood for, and Christopher Hitchens points this out, Trotsky's analysis of the rise of uh, fascism, particularly the rise of the Nazis in Germany and the danger it presented to the working class, stands out. There's many independent commentaries, not even socialists who say he forewarned about the consequences of what would happen if the German, German workers' movement did not unite, form a united front of the Social Democrats and of the Communist Party to bar the way to Hitler coming to power. Unfortunately his advice wasn't accepted and because of the divisions in the German working class the Nazis were able to come to power. The main responsibility politically for that by the way was the bourgeois, that's the capitalists of Germany, by the way supported by Winston Churchill and supported by the British capitalists and the idea that the Nazis were not in any way kind of a, a representative of capitalism implied in services mm -hmm. position it's totally false. Of course, they went, you know, they went kind of in a crude, caricatured fashion. Hitler was not a, a puppet in a sense. He represented a new phenomena in history. It represented the distilled essence of capitalism, of uh, counter-revolutionary action against the German Revolution, that particularly based itself upon the de deranged and displaced sections of the middle class and the lumpen working class, mobilized them as a force got the enormous financial backing of big business, without which Hitler would not have been able to take, to take power. As he himself admitted, he said, if only they would have known how weak we were, and that was precisely what Trotsky was arguing, but it was a direct agency of, of German capitalism and of world capitalism at a certain stage to, to actually prevent revolution in Germany and to smash those forces and drown them in blood in a way that had not been seen before by mobilizing the middle class into a, into a, a kind of lever, into a hammer against the organizations of the working class. And the result was catastrophe. The atomization of the German working class and the, the coming to power of this, the most reactionary phenomena that we've seen, an outgrowth of capitalism itself. And really, you, by services statements, it's as if fascism is some kind of independent mm -hmm. factor in history. We reject that view of history. There are two major classes, the working class and the ruling class. 
and of course in between the intermediary strata. All political forces ultimately represent those classes in one form or another. What did Hitler represent? They represented the, the reaction, as I pointed out, of the capitalists who armed Hitler by mobilizing the deranged middle class against the working class. In that sense, he was a puppet, of, uh, but not in the crude fashion in which service tries to present it. And during the course of the segments on YouTube, um, Robert Service talks about how he thinks it would have been better had uh, Trotsky died before his, his final writings, and particularly that it would have been better had he not uh, published the um, Revolution Betrayed. I've heard you talk about that as one of Trotsky's most important books, so I'm guessing that you wouldn't agree with him on that. Well, it's incredible for service. I mean, talk about getting it wrong. The fact of the matter is, to any Marxist, to any Trotskyist who understands Trotsky's ideas, his best writings were his later writings. He himself pointed out that if uh, he wasn't absolutely essentially underestimates his role in the Russian Revolution because Lenin was there and the Bolsheviks were there. If Lenin wouldn't have been there, he said, he wouldn't have had the authority with the Bolsheviks to actually overcome their misgivings and opposition of the leading Bolsheviks to the revolution. But his role in the 1930s was absolutely essential and irreplaceable. His analysis of revolution betrayed, of Stalinism, was one of the greatest contributions, in, in our opinion, of human thought at that period, without which we would not be able to find our way today in analysing the complicated phenomena of Stalinism and prepared the working class for the kind of developments that we've seen in the collapse of Stalinism. And very simply, in the revolution betrayed, and this is what Service doesn't understand, he didn't defend Stalin, he did not defend Stalin's, Stalin's methods in Finland mm -hmm. or in the Baltic states, but what he said is he defended the gains of the Russian revolution, which is a planned economy, and all the things that flow from that, the advantages that that meant over capitalism at that stage. And remember, Russia was advancing at a much higher rate of growth than the capitalism in the depression of the 1930s, and was, was actually attracting workers from the West to Russia at that stage. But he opposed the one-party bureaucratic regime and stood for democracy, first of all, with inside the party. But after 1933-34, saw that the, the privileged caste in Russia was now a stratum who were opposed to the working class, not only in Russia but worldwide, were prepared to defend the planned economy so long as it guaranteed their privileged existence. But once it no longer could guarantee that existence, then they were prepared to liquidate the planned economy. And Trotsky spells all that out in the revolution betrayed, which was brilliantly borne out by the collapse of Stalinism in 1989. And this man, an historian, does not even see that that is one of the greatest contributions that Trotsky made. It's quite incredible that he can be lionized as a great conscientious historian, and yet he does not see this, the most essential aspect of Trotsky's uh, writings.